you simply won't believe what I'm about to show you. Take a look at this. If you looked at the uh, last video I made of this little preamp board using the 5532, I did comment that unmodified it's a piece of junk um, because it has very poor HF response which was due largely to the fact that here where you can see me pointing there used to be a capacitor and the same the other side now this is in the feedback loop and they've actually put the wrong value capacitor in there and I've removed those and it's now flat as a pancake and actually a very good little preamp but this is the latest version of the same thing. If I compare them side by side, you can see there's actually quite a huge difference on there. There's still the decoupling capacitors, and but what there isn't, there isn't input coupling and output coupling capacitors because this one uses a single rail and therefore the center point has to be coupled via a capacitor because there'll be volts on it. Whereas the new one needs a split power supply and if all the DC conditions are correct there will be no volts or no DC volts on the output. But also something to consider, you must make sure there's no um, voltage on the input from whatever device you're putting into it otherwise it will amplify that and you will have DC offset which is not good. Now in many respects this should be a perfect amplifier because apart from the few resistors you see there which set the DC conditions and the feedback the chip is an excellent chip it's been around for donkey's years almost as long as I have no, not quite as long. So, as I've said before, if you feed a good low distortion chip with the correct voltages and you don't want silly amounts of gain from it, it will naturally be pretty good. And this particular chip, the 5532, is one of my favourites. Very low noise and it's just superb as a general purpose preamp. Right, it, it looks rather silly sitting on the bench there, so small. You can see how small it is by my hand. But this is the input, and I'm feeding that from my computer output where I have the usual tone sweeps recorded. And this is the output, and I'm looking at it here, um, separate channels from this going is going to the scope. And here, I'm actually running it initially on batteries because it does work from 9 volts upwards. And the only disadvantage of running it on only 9 volts will be its ability to handle large signals. And so its gain prior to clipping will be somewhat reduced. But it will still work and do all the same things it should be. And um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to plug this in. If I can do it around the camera without knocking it. Right, it's plugged in. And uh, let's have a look at the scope. Right, power is applied. I'm feeding one kilohertz to the input at a suitable level. And we will just connect the scope. And well, that's working. That's the left channel. And we'll now connect to the right channel. Ah, that is not working and in fact there is pretty well well there's a considerable amount of DC offset so unless well I kind of wired it up wrong <laughs> it's just not possible um, that rather to me looks like we've got a faulty chip well I do have another one here so I'll just pause temporarily 
and pop the new chip in and let's see if it uh, is the chip or whether it's some kind of other fault. Well, surprise, surprise, the chip is faulty and there is the full negative rail on the output of that chip. So all I've done is literally popped out the offending item and popped in a new chip. So that's the left channel and that's the right channel all working fine. Right, now I've just been looking at this and I have a feeling this is going to be a piece, a bigger piece of crap as the last one was because looking at it carefully it looks like it's still got a capacitor across the feedback loop and what's the bet I'd be willing to place my life on it that they've copied the, the last version of it with all its faults and somebody's gone to the put, uh, trouble of making a new PCB and whittling down so that it's just minimal components but I bet you they've made the first mistake the same mistake again so you're going to see this live and if I'm wrong I shall be the first to hold my hand up and say so so we'll just put the here we go you can see where we look at the um, voltage here it's actually 4.6 because it's a times 10 probe but it wobbles about a bit but you will see if you actually look at the scope all to the time base and it's still fairly flat at 7 kilohertz 9 kilohertz and you know what I think that's going to die 10 kilohertz yep we're down to 3.9 something volts and it's dropping away rapidly can you actually believe that they've made the same error on this new board here we are at 17k and way dropping off now 18k and it will recycle any second and all to the time base you can see where it's gone so not only have they supplied one with the, with a faulty chip they've actually still put the wrong value capacitor on it now it just proves that the companies that make these things have zero knowledge of what they're doing um, and clearly it, it has never been tested. Now you'd think if they make a new design and if a person like me, a pensioner at home with just a simple oscilloscope and some test tones can show this to be a piece of crap, why would they go ahead and make presumably thousands of them to do the same thing? Well, let's have a closer look and see what's going on. Right, if we have a look at the chip this is pin one and which is the output of one of the op amps and pin two which is the next one down that is the resistor that's in the feedback loop and if you look carefully i don't know if you'll be able to see it on here but it's not really that i can't get any closer without it going out of focus but i bet you that's the offending capacitor there's no reason for it to have a capacitor on it at all because the chip is very stable and it doesn't need a chip and unfortunately that chip does not have any markings on it so I'm going to remove it now and we will see if that skewers the fault well that's the capacitor um, it looks quite big there, but on the end of my finger, look at it. If the camera will focus, it's really small. And I've tried to actually measure it with the capacitance uh, tester, but uh, it's so small I can't get the probes on it properly. Now, being a lazy beast, I haven't desoldered those. I've just cut them off with my wire cutters because I'm very confident 
the, the, that capacitor won't be needed. And if I do decide to put a small capacitor on there, 33 picofarad or something like that, I shall um, resolder it. Anyway, let's have a look. Well, I won't bore you with a complete sweep, but there we are starting at 6K. And needless to say, it's as flat as a pancake. So yet another Chinese cock up. It really, really, really makes me so cross that they peddle this crap when for just the tiniest bit more effort, they'd have a really good product. And I'm sure when I finally come to do some more tests on this, as you'd expect, this preamp is going to be absolutely super. But straight out of the box, and if you don't have any equipment or even basic stuff like I've got, there you are, 18K, 19K, and it does just flicker off slightly at the end, which is what the test loops do. So there again, what can I say? I wouldn't... Well, it's no good. This particular one, is, as, as you've seen, was actually faulty because the chip was faulty. But it cost pennies. So if you wanted a good preamp, even the chips are pennies as well. It's worth getting these taking out that capacitor and it's as rock steady I've, I've got all unscreened leads here and there's no oscillation or anything nasty happening this is the item from aliexpress and this is the company i purchased it from and i don't hold this particular store responsible for the product